Go to InvestorThrive.com right now to check out some of our free training on how you can make money as a real estate investor or schedule a time with me so we can chat about our mastermind mentorship and how we can help you learn how to wholesale nationwide and grow your business. We are live with Investor Thrive. We got my man over here, Francis. And Francis, I don't think I've ever even tried to say your last name, man. How do you say your last name? <laughs> Iguilo. Iguilo. Okay, that wasn't hard. I mean, yeah, that, too easy. Just, yeah, that was easy, bro. No problem. <laughs> yeah, man. So welcome. Thanks for coming on the Investor Thrive podcast. We just did a deal together, man. And I know you're out there doing big things. So what we wanted to talk today, and this is the Investor Thrive Sales Mastery podcast, where we talk about how sales is integrated, how it's uh, affiliated with wholesaling and real estate investing. So, yes, man, thanks, thanks again for coming in. I appreciate yeah, it. Man. Thanks, thanks for having me, man. I mean, I, I watched you for a long time. Yeah, bro, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know, and so let's kind of just dive right into it, man. I mean, people might not know who you are. Some people might not know who I am. You know, that watch this, but let's kind of find out about you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, a little background so people that are watching this can get to know you. Right, right. So my name is Francis Iguilo. I am originally Nigerian. I was born in Nigeria. I actually didn't leave Nigeria until I was 20 years old. So say about a good nine years ago now. Uh huh. Yeah, I am. Um, so I used to live in New York for, for the best part of eight years. And I just moved out to Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I'm at now. I moved out here in the summer of last year. That's pretty much me in the, you know, in a nutshell. So New York. Okay. So you're in New York and you said you moved in to Atlanta from the summer of last year? 2021 what made you move so that's a very good question so i started wholesaling in new york city i um and which was kind of a bad idea but that's also why i am who i am today yeah yeah um, so i started wholesaling in 2015 and you know i'm um, just being, being new york being an, an attorney state wholesaling is not as easy out there as, as it is in, in other parts of the of the country now yeah being in new york i didn't realize that because i thought that's how everyone was having it right you see so i mean i started hosting towards the end of 2015 december and i'll be honest with you i didn't i didn't get my first deal until 2019. hold on hold on let's yeah. say that again you got to say that again i started wholesaling in 2015 <laughs> november okay and i got my first deal in september 2019. so you're telling me you did this for four years and you didn't give up and i didn't make a dime zero dollars wow bro zero that's dollars. amazing how did you not give up i mean i'm sure tons of people have been like oh man this doesn't work how did yeah, you know? just so for me it didn't make any sense to me right it's because mm -hmm. i will do everything i thought i was supposed to be doing i mean i'll be maybe i wasn't doing it the right way right mm -hmm. i'll do everything i thought i was supposed to be doing it just wasn't working out but then i'll come on the internet and I see guys, you know, I see Carlos Reyes, I see Max Max, mm -hmm, I see mm -hmm. all these cats. Like, if either these people are lying to me about something or I'm just not doing enough. Okay. Right? And now, so, you know how there's this saying that if you want to fix the world, you try to fix the man, mm -hmm. right? I can't fix the world. I can't fix what kind of, you know, information these guys are putting out there, but I can fix myself. So okay. let me focus on me. Let me try to do better. Let me try to be better. Let me try to grind some more, make some more calls, throw some more money at marketing. So all these three, four years was just self-development and just, okay, I can do better. I can make better calls, you know. I can make better offers, you know. I can grind for longer, you know, things like that. And so I didn't realize it had taken that long, but I'll tell you this much. It was a very, very painful journey for sure. It was. Dang. Yeah, man. That's I'm, I'm so <laughs> proud of you for continuing to go through that. You know, a lot of people, they don't get their first deal for a couple months and they give up, right? Yeah. So what had happened was, so the whole time, right, I, I couldn't work a regular job and do wholesaling because it just wasn't working for me. Mm -hmm. So I stopped working and I became a full-time Uber driver. And I would drive like 16, 18 hour Ooh. shifts. Dang. to be able to make enough money to send out mailers at the time because that's what i was doing wow i can call people's names here because you know i mean they were helpful mm -hmm. to my journey i hired cody sperber at the time as a mentor mm -hmm. I, I think that mentorship cost me about eight thousand nine thousand dollars you know how many hours you get to drive as an uber driver how many hours you, you got to drive to you to save that much money four years bro <laughs> that's what i'm saying and then i had to i had to hire um what's his name tan merrill as a mentor to teach me the business and he was it was like a third mentorship really that i had to pay for yeah i'm um, just trying to find my way right but but the one sick but then the one the one missing piece that i didn't realize was 
the fact that I was in New York freaking city. That was the problem. Wow. Right. Wow. So it took me sometime in 2019. I think it was February. I mean, I was just resilient. Mm -hmm. So I go to this event in, um, I think it was in Austin. It was in Texas somewhere. It was James Huck and what's his name? Josh Gaiman put it together. Okay. Josh Gaiman and, and James Huck put that put that event together. And I met this guy that was like, hey, you need to go virtually. You, you need to get out of New York City. Get out of there. That was what he told me. He's like, well, if you can't move, you need to get out of there. So starting something is virtual. Right. And then to me, it was just like this crazy idea. Like, I'm struggling in my backyard. You try and tell me to go to someone else's backyard and go get deals. Right. But anyway, yeah. long, long story short, he puts me on to five dollar craigslist ads wow the mm -hmm. he put me onto them and he told me hey here's my template just use the exact same thing and post you know five dollars like twice every week just so you're on top okay and i started doing that in august and then three months later i got that first deal off of wow. a five dollar craigslist ad the real question is you still do the craigslist ads <laughs> i still do them That's i still awesome, do them till today I, I've never heard of someone doing that. I've been doing this a long time and I've never heard of someone marketing through the Craigslist ads. Wow. Yeah, five dollars. I mean, so what I do is I take like 20 different cities and I just mm -hmm. spend a hundred dollars. It's time consuming. Right. You know, I told myself I'm gonna spend two hundred dollars on Craigslist ads, ads ads a month. And I just pick 20 cities and I just post in there. I mean, you you never know. What kind of ads are they? Are they like, hey, um, I'll buy I'll buy houses for cash ad? You have access to Craigslist really quick. Yeah, I have Craigslist, yeah. So, so yeah, it's just pretty much yeah, it's like we buy houses, cash. It's it's a lot of ads like that on Craigslist. You yeah, I've you seen a lot of them. Ones. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty much those, but then it's in the paid section. So a lot of people don't have five dollars. That's funny. Yeah, bro. I've never thought about doing that. So, <laughs> so I mean, I'm sure the return on your investment is huge on Craigslist because it's, it's not that expensive. It's like a thousand X easy. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So when you <laughs> say you, you do pay-per-click as well though, right? So yeah, you're not, just, okay. Yeah, you're not relying just solely on the Craigslist for, no, I just, I just do Craigslist just because I mean, you know, that was what, that was literally my desire. And it's just, I just feel like I'll be ignorant to not do it anymore because I know it yeah. still works. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. But it's, it doesn't keep like, it doesn't generate like tons of deals, right? It just does maybe yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. Maybe a couple of years. That's right. 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 Okay. Right, but right. it's worth it because then, you know, the return on ad spend is, is totally yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. And you say it's time consuming. So you have a VA doing it or do you do it or how, how does that work? I do it myself now because I just don't see that as enough work for a VA. Got it. It's time yeah. consuming for me to do it. It takes me about an hour or two to do it, but it's not enough work to keep a VA busy as of right now. I love it. I love it, man. I think that's awesome. So you were in a situation in New York. You had to get out of there. So you could have just stayed in New York and wholesale virtually in Atlanta. Why did you move? Just because you wanted to be in your, the backyard? Good question. So that's that's a good question. So the real story with New York was because it was an attorney state. So last week, I actually did a deal in New York. Oh, cool. And then so what the way New York works is the contracts we used to wholesale, ideally, like the whole two-page contract things, mm -hmm. you give that to a New York attorney, he's gonna rip that thing in half. I know, man. I've done deals in New York too. They're just <laughs> like, what? They're like, what is this thing? <laughs> what is this? So that's the first part. The second part is they have this ten percent down payment. That's that's a prerequisite. You have to put down ten percent. There's nothing like a thousand dollars EMD or some bullshit five thousand dollars. And right. then you're in New York City. These houses are starting from half a million and up. Right. So you you're telling me Uber driver to put on fifty grand on a house I don't even know I can move. Where am I gonna find that? Let me tell you something really quick. The people in New York are cutthroat, bro. I've talked to a lot of the buyers out there, dude. They are just they are some cutthroat dudes. I, I mean, there's no hate or anything. I love these type of people, but they're most of them, the the investors I talked to were Jewish, and they were like freaking savvy, bro. They were like they were like Ooh. no BS. They were they were like, hey, bro, yeah, I ain't got no time for you unless you. <laughs> right. Like, right. They were Italian or Jewish. I don't know if you experienced that, but that's who I yeah, got. Like when I started realizing that I couldn't get things on the contract because I didn't have the down payment, mm -hmm. what I did was I started working for the Jews in New York. So I literally would go to appointments with them because they were the money bags and I was the deal finder. So that was it. So that was how I started, really, to be honest. Like one year deep, I realized I can't do this myself. So I became a bird dog for them, Yeah, literally. And so what I'll do is when I find a deal, I'll bring it to them and then they'll tell me, well, this is how much we can pay you. And right. those numbers I'm telling you, like those guys are happy to pay me 75, 80,000 on the deal back then. 
Bro, they don't care, dude. If it's a deal, yeah. it's <laughs> numbers make sense. It just makes sense. They don't, you know, they wouldn't care, right? Right. But the biggest problems I had was I was lucky that we're getting things under contract. New York is the one state in the country where you can have escrow for a year and a half and it still hasn't closed. That's crazy, man. And especially York, when COVID hit there, bro, things were taking forever. Right. New York is the one state. So it was it was just bro, it was just you're going to bed thinking, well, I got a seventy thousand dollar deal in the works, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna close one day and things are gonna get better. And then it's six months later, and then the buyer's telling you, Hey, I need my NS money back because I got, you know, I've had forty thousand dollars sitting in the in the attorney's office for the past six months. I you know, I just gotta, you know, I I, I gotta move on. Yep. The buyer, your buyer walks away, what are you gonna do? That's the wholesale. You can try to resuscitate the deal, but it's taking six months, it still hasn't closed. So I'm just gonna move on and look for the next one. Dude. Right? crazy yeah well, that's why it was so frustrating because the timelines were so long only to end in disappointment and then you, you got to start the whole cycle over and over and over and over again and then you go on instagram and it's like freaking carlos reyes is telling you how they're doing 30 something deals a month bro can i hold one of those just one yeah <laughs> right <For real. laughs> that's exactly how i was feeling back then so why i moved out the first deal i did in 2019 from crazy's ads was actually in Atlanta. Oh, that's why you're like, man, that's the promised yeah. land. Oh, that, that's exactly what I said to myself. So I don't know if I told you, but I'm also military. I'm in the reserves. Mm-hmm. And then we, we were gone for like a six month training in Germany at one time. And then I got back in the summer of 21. Oh. So when I came back in the summer of 21, to be honest with you, I was without the lease because my lease had my, my lease was up at the time. So once I came back, it was like I, I, need, I needed to find a new apartment in New York or the alternative was to just get out of New York. Okay. Say, so, you know what? Let's let's just go somewhere else now. Let's get it. I love it. And and I told you I'm from I, I was raised in Atlanta and Marietta, Roswell, Georgia. So it's a great, yeah. great state, man. It's awesome out there. Tons Absolutely. of deals, tons of deals too, you know. A lot. A lot. So that's awesome, man. That's I think that's a great story. And honestly, we might know some of the same buyers in New York. I'm sure there's a, some big players that I talk to that maybe you guys know. And there, there's some funny dudes, man. No BS out there. They're just like, yeah, hey, they're so money. People. I ain't got time for you unless you got a deal. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, are yeah they're very interesting people for sure. Yeah, yeah man, they're cut. <laughs> I had one deal, and the and I was like, I don't know, man. I only have a couple. Like, I only have a day left of you know, uh, what's it called? Like due diligence. And he's like, dude, I'm sending the money right now to the tile company. Like, it's it's already there. Like, <laughs> like I couldn't say no to him. Like, he was like, no, it's already there. Money's already. There. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they, tell them they get it. They're hustlers, man, out there. Like. Great. You know, when I think about good salesmen, I'm like, man. Those guys, like, they're just so aggressive, naturally aggressive. And, like, they assume everything. Like, assume Ooh. the sale. Assume, like, that you're going to do with them. It, it's, <laughs> it's something I've never faced, felt before because I'm the kind of sales guy who, you know, I'll present the option. I'll, like, let people make the decision. I make sure you feel comfortable. I ask you how you're feeling. But they're, like, boom, just, like, pushing you. Like, the Jordan Belfort st- style. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's That's the like Italian, Italian, um, yeah, Russian um, influence right there. Dude, crazy. So let's talk about this deal that just happened. So we uh, just, so there's a $25,000 fee, right? And we kind of want to break it down. So kind of tell me how you guys, uh, how you guys work that deal on this wholesale. Okay. So on our side, so actually um, the guy that the acquisitions agent that took the deal down is no longer with us. Oh, okay. What happened? So, you know, just not, just not meeting the standards for me. You know, it's one Maybe. thing to get, it's one thing to get deals. I mean, to be honest with you, wholesaling is, is not that hard. Anybody can get deals. Right, right. You have a hot lead in front of you. Anybody can close them. You just got to put in the work. So if he's not mm-hmm. making his conversations or his calls or hitting his offers, it ain't worth keeping him, right? Yeah, and then bad office, you know, bad bad office etiquette, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, you know you know what I'm saying? He, he just, just wasn't working. Mm-hmm. It just yeah, wasn't working. And he would talk back at me too, which is fine. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, it ain't fine, right? Because you know, yeah. like, unless not, nah, you gotta have a, you have to have respect too in the office environment too. Yeah, I mean, because I wouldn't, because I wouldn't, you know, I mean, and he was an older guy too, so I think I guess that was the challenge, you know. Right? Maybe felt like, hey, maybe you know, he had more experience, something like that. That part, that part. But anyway, he was he, he was no he was no longer with us. But then he locked it up, and then he left literally maybe a day or two after. No, left so he and he got fired the day or two after. Okay. And so we got the deal at two hundred and forty thousand. We thought the um the ARV at the time was somewhere around three twenty. That's what we were looking at. But then the house was in excellent condition. So I looked at the numbers and I went, Well, 
if we can take this house down at 240 with hard money mm -hmm. and after costs and fees we're all in you know, a like 270 275 you know that's looking like a good 40 50 thousand dollars yeah for deal sure right there. that's what it was looking like and then so what happened was i brought my hard money guy in you know, and obviously, because it was going to be a bridge loan, you know, bridge loans mean being that there was no rehab budget, right? Because it was going to be a bridge loan, the hard money guy wanted was going to come in at 80% LTV, right? Right, right. Or loan to contract price. So 80% LTV put them at about 170, sorry, 190 thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And that we're going to bring to closing, which meant I had to come out of pocket 53,000. Right, right. And so, so for me, that was the first challenge. Right. Yeah, that's a lot to put down, you know, for yeah. sure. If especially if you're trick. doing other deals, and you know, right, right now, <laughs> bro, it's it, the the market. I'm straight with everybody. The market yeah. right now is it's hard to know what's going on. Interest rates are going up. You know, I have three deals right now that I flipped. They ain't selling, and mm -hmm. and most people are are probably like worried. I'd look at it as like, dude, I just gotta make more money. You know, <laughs> but yeah. So I, I'm assuming when you had to bring that much, and you also saw the markets cooling off, you're probably yeah. like, right. I um. And then around that, that same time, I had three flips here in Atlanta, which I had bought in July that I literally paid for them. Mm -hmm. And I put it back on the market because I was like, I'm not doing any flips at this yeah. point. So it was like I had experienced that, you know, put down like forty, fifty thousand dollars on like three houses, sold them quickly because I was I, I didn't know what was coming. Right. And then now you're asking me to come out of pocket at 53,000. So, so I go, well, okay, you know what? If that's my only option, we're going to do it. You know, we have the resources to be able to do that. And so that was when I started reaching out to people. Hey, look, do you think we can move this deal off market? Maybe. Or do you think I can find, I think why I reached out to you was, do you think, you know, a private investor, like a private lender, right. is happy to be in second position? To because fund for the down. Me, right. To, right. Fund, to fund the down payment, right? Because for me... The hard money guy has to stay in first position because he's coming in at 80%. Right? So any, anyone that's coming in at 20% has to be in second position. But mm -hmm. every, everybody me and you knows is not going to stay in second position. Of course. On any of for the most part. Everybody would like to be first. So that was when we started talking about the deal. And then you told me, hey, it looks like I may have somebody for this deal, right? Right, right. And I actually pitched the guy that I knew if he wanted to, you know, First, I was like, hey, do you want to do the down? Do you want to be in second position? And he was like, yeah, I mean, I'd possibly be open to doing it, but he wanted, you know, he wanted a bigger split, right? Of 50 the fee, 50. right? 50 50, which at that point, it's like, man, just give me my fee, right? I, why would I wait? And the way that the market is going here in Utah is most investors are looking at ARV, current ARV, and they're saying, okay, 15% minus that because they believe that in six months, three months, two months, that's where it's going. They believe it's trending down, right? Yeah. So, that's kind of honestly what I think too is where it's going like here at least here in Utah so I, when I told you hey man I don't know if you want to hold on to that but I know somebody that will take that risk and bring that money so that's how we work together and this is what I tell people Francis and I would teach this to your team and I would I'm sure you already teach it but I do what's called uh, reverse wholesaling but I've I dubbed it as calling it like the I call it painless wholesaling strategy because Sometimes being a wholesaler doing it the traditional way of first finding the deal, then sending it out to find a buyer, that can be kind of painful sometimes. That's why I call it yes. pain. Because as we've done nationwide, you get a deal. You sometimes don't know if it's a deal. Like you'll run the numbers and you're like, dude, this makes sense on paper. This Everything makes sense. And then you'll send it out and nobody will want it. And you'll be like, what the heck? This is yeah. a deal. I thought it was a deal. So the way I do it, I've actually trimmed my team down like super small because you know I've trimmed down the expenses, the marketing budget and everything because right now the market's shifting and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on marketing to keep going out, paying for everybody. I basically just down to myself for now, right? And just because of the market shift. And I just look at deals that come into my box, you know, my, my email from other wholesalers. I look at MLS deals and I do specific areas marketing like a little bit and I just attack bring them to buyers i know that are buying still and i call it, it's reverse wholesaling but i call it painless wholesaling because right. a deal for example two days ago came across i saw someone was looking for a buyer in american fork and i i know someone that buys out there all the time so i said hey i got a buyer i know you're kind of new you probably don't know many people but i got a guy that will buy right now so he walked it and right now you know he's he's offered us more than what they have it under contract for we're just negotiating and wow. uh, it, it cost me zero dollars cost me a couple hours and, and it's i think it's just way easier i know right. you're a team and that's good you know if you have the team and you you like to you know do more deals and all that stuff that's cool but for me i just have to worry about me making 10 20 15k you know 30k a month 
with little expenses and I'm good now because I'm running Investor Thrive. I don't have to run like some giant or operation because that, you know, and, 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 that's expensive. And that makes a ton of sense. I mean, isn't isn't that how Jamil is making a fortune off of Kegley? Bro, that's all Jamil does, right? I think that's uh, astro flipping. I think that's what they do. The difference with me and what they do is like I actually like get super tight with my guys. Like instead of blasting it out to an email list and like hoping someone will open it up, I just call my top guys and they have an answer for me either on the phone or in a couple hours, so I don't have to wait. Fair enough. And then that makes absolute sense because without you, I probably would have been $53,000 short of money. And then, but then let's get to the juicy part, right? Of the deal. Yeah. Of how, so your buyer, your, so you, so I send it to, I, so you take the deal to your buyer. He wants to be, um, we're, we're pitching it to him as a private lender, you know, to right. fund the deal payment. And then he looks at it and he goes, well, I'll take this at what, 265 to I think it's I think he's at 265 to begin with. Yeah, but then he was at 259, remember? Yeah. He came in at 259. We're trying to push him to come to 265. That's right. You wanted 265. We had he had 259. So that's where he was. Yeah. So I said, hey, this right. is what he has without my fee. This is what you know, this is right. What he's to do. right. And then you needed to get paid. I had the guy that I got fired, I had to pay him. The acquisitions agent that picked up the file after he left, I had to pay him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, well, I have to pay too many people and then i gotta get paid a little bit myself yeah you gotta make money too and then you gotta get paid so it's like well nineteen thousand is not a lot of money for four of us to split amongst ourselves so we so we tried to push him to give us more but he ended up giving us coming back and saying he was at 267. no he came he actually came down he's at 259 he said hey i've got to do 255 that's the best i can do right so he came down to 255 after walking the property right Yep. Came 255. Okay, bet. And then you suggested something to me. And you said, well, here's what we can do, right? Why don't we see if we can get the seller down a little bit, right? Right. Because the and interest rate, right? I was like, hey, look, everybody knows in Utah things aren't <laughs> selling as fast as they were. Right. So what I did was I called my acquisitions guy. I was like, hey, call the seller. Tell her we got to be at 220. Tell her interest rate just jumped up 1%, actually 1.5% over the past week or so. And we're having a hard time, you know, sourcing the funds to get this deal done at 240. Right. Right. So he calls her and then he anchors her at 220. Got to. And then they go back and forth for a little bit. And then she's like 225. All right, let's get it done. Bro, the anchor is money. And for people right. that don't know what the anchor is, when you have a seller on the phone, you don't go there and you tell them the target price that you want. You go lower right. than that. So when you right. negotiate and you actually come up, they feel like they won. Right. Because if you say 230 and she says yes, then, you know, she might in the back of her head been like, man, maybe I could have gotten a better deal. Right. It's the right way to so, do it. Yeah. So we anchored the 220. The goal was to get her down just 10, you know, mm -hmm. just so that, you know, everybody could have a decent payday. And so she came back at 225. I'm like, great deal regardless. Then, and then you have another. So then you, so then you tell me here, I have another guy that can actually come in and take a look at the house. Mm -hmm. Right. The second guy comes in and I think his offer comes in at 265. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that one was actually 260. He came in at the offer higher than the original offer. Right. Gotcha. So he came in at 260. And then pretty much from the time this gentleman came in to the time he closed was probably like a week. Right. Maybe. Yeah. He was he was quick. Yeah. He was quick. The title company was quick, too. Yeah. The, well, remember, you had that title company that you were working with and we had to switch it to the one that I'm I'm really cool with. Yeah. Because they wanted the seller to sign the assignment fee. Of, What's up with that, bro? That was stupid. Where, in what country does that does that happen? <laughs> And, and, and she's like, sorry. And we're like, see ya. <laughs> right. You're less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was sweet. So we we switched title companies quickly. My 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 title company shout out GT Title. They're they're awesome. They got it done quick. But yeah, man, that was that was a good deal. And this is the reason why we're talking about this. Everyone is. It's not always just like you get the house and you sign it and it's over yeah, and it's easy. Carter. Like sometimes you got to jump through some hoops. That's just how it is. <laughs> Yeah, it is a it, it is a crazy business for sure, for sure. I mean, as a company right now, we're, we're probably doing anywhere between 18 and 20 contracts a month That's as awful. a company. But then of, of the 18 to 20, maybe only about nine or 10 will end up closing. That, that's usually how it is, right? It's about right? 10. It's about 15%. It's, it's, like the, it's like the other half. You have to, you're dealing with angry sellers, you know, like, why are you not buying my house? Why are you backing out? Mm hmm or some of them, it's just you, know, you get to the closing table and the sellers disappeared. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always something, yeah. you know, like we're sitting here talking about this one deal that went through. But I'm sure between me and you, there's probably eight to ten transactions that were just 
that have gone south just this week alone by itself. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy, bro. That's yeah. just literally, it, it, you know, title companies, all the issues that happen. I'm at sellers, but yeah, one thing that has helped me as an acquisition guy, and I'm sure it'll help you, um, is, you know, if you can ha have some, this is kind of the iffy part. If you have a team, like if you can have your acquisitions, guys get tight with specific people in areas so they can just ask them what they'll pay. That gives them a really good idea of like what they need to get the house under contract. The only, mm -hmm. the only downside is if you have a team, then they can develop that relationship and just take off on you. Right. That's kind mm -hmm. of the downside. But if, if they don't know how to produce, do the marketing, produce leads, then it's not a, it's not a big deal, but that that's why I, I was able to do so many deals when I was doing the majority of my acquisition work back in the days i knew like i could just ask someone you know someone i was tight with and they would just tell me what they'd pay and right. i would get under contract and if i felt like i could get more i would still blast it out but i would use a buyer to gauge the price because especially with nationwide it's kind of hard to know where to pay even if you know how to run comps yeah, it's impossible it's impossible i mean we're still so we were just nationwide right yeah, we're yeah. just nationwide getting leads in the middle of nowhere. Terrible and, idea, by the way. Yeah, and, and I scaled it back. I, I met I met with this guy that that's actually figured out you know some kind of a, I don't call it the secret sauce, mm -hmm. and then he gave me a list that he uses that actually. So this guy is doing anywhere. I think he's doing about a million and a half a month nationwide. Who, who is it? Um, Forest. Uh, Blackburn. Yeah. So he I mean, he does he does Tarek El Moose stuff, right? Yeah. So I I know he used to work with this guy that had a TV show. Um, yeah, in, Tarek, uh, right? Yeah. So he gave me he actually gave me a personalized list that he uses. Sweet. Of like yeah, he gave it to me. I mean, obviously he cost an arm an arm an arm on the leg, right? <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> so he gave me that, and once I started doing that, that's when everything changed for me because I was no longer getting deals in the middle deals in the middle of nowhere. Dude, it's it's almost impossible. Like, and you spend so much time trying to dispo it. It's just a waste of time. I know. I know. And then at that time when we're doing everything was going on the market, which is no, we just, everything was innovation. Everything wasn't, we had to get power returns on almost every single house. I was like, this is stressful. Man. Mm -hmm. This is, this is not the business I signed up for. For sure. But well, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to share that list with you if you think it's something you need for sure. With me? Yeah, of course. Man. Oh, brother. Yeah. Like send me that list. I'd love to take a look at it, man. And you know, mm -hmm. honestly, uh, I'd love, I'd love to work with you more, whether you have deals here or if I have deals that you can help me with. So let's kind of, for the viewers that are out here that want to reach out to you and work with you, what can you help out the Investor Thrive Nation, anybody out with it? Do you, do you, I know you do deals nationwide, but where can, do you specifically work? Maybe if they bring you something, they can hit you up. Um, So I think I'm pretty good with New York for the most part. I mean, that was my stomping ground for four okay. years when I was literally, I, I mean, I can just, just like you, I, I could be on the phone with a seller right now in New York and then I have. I text my buyer, hey, would you pay X amount of dollars? Perfect. Right? So yeah. it's New York. I'm here in Atlanta. I'm going to have a lot of flips going on here. So I'm probably your buyer out here for, for the most part. Those are my primary markets. Everywhere else, I'll just, I mean, rely on. So I use um, investor list to dispo okay. for the most part. And then it's it really has changed a lot for me. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I had it in the very beginning when it was like the prototype. I was on cartel mode. But honestly, for us, because we were mainly nationwide, <laughs> and I mean nationwide, we're getting crappy leads. I got it and I thought it was going to help us dispo bad areas, right? right. But it, it doesn't. It doesn't really if help out. If it's a bad area, it's, it's not moving. So that was, so I had it for a long time mm -hmm. and I literally called, I literally called John. Mm -hmm. I told him, hey, listen, I'm canceling this thing. This thing yeah. is not working for me. I'm paying X amount of dollars a month right. for this. Like, I think it was about three or five grand at, at the time a month for this thing. Yeah, bro, it was, it, it was expensive, brother. I and mean, I can't sell anything on this. Yeah. But, but it wasn't Investor Leaf's fault. It was just the deal, those in those neighborhoods were just too small. Like There was no buyers over there. So when I got that, when I got that um, secret source from Forrest, mm -hmm. and I started shooting out the deals on Investor Lift, Bro, we we've assigned about two hundred and ten thousand just this month on, on investor list. Literally, that's amazing. Like, that's amazing. I can show you my dashboard right now. That's amazing, bro. That's right, freaking sick. So that was that's what changed it for you is forget all the little trashy areas, the whole nationwide, sp specifically target good markets 
and then you use investor lift to help you dispo right? literally that's it if i hadn't met forrest that and he gave me that list he gave me and i didn't have investor lift i'll probably just be crying somewhere right now yeah so let me kind of tell you about my experience so nick perry came on a podcast with uh i can't real estate disruptors and he was talking about nationwide wholesaling so i was like that is the key because i was in i'm in utah kind of similar to new york obviously it's a lot harder but ours is you know it's pretty difficult to get a deal right so i saw nick perry's podcast and he was talking about nationwide and i was like dude i need to reach out to that guy he's doing it right we reached out to him this is before he coached and he basically showed us his google campaign you know how to target nationwide and he was doing well you know at the time i don't know what he's doing now but uh i just literally copied his campaign did the whole thing started getting leads everywhere and i was brand new to this so you know i was thought i was getting i thought i was getting tons of deals because i every seller wanted to sell in these random areas so i got like 40 contracts had to cancel them all. So <laughs> yeah, crazy. So yeah. I, had to those. I got investor lift because they said that would help me yeah. help. And then, you know, I was just like, forget this dude, but it sounds like you, you cracked the code. You need specific areas and then you can use uh, investor lift to help you dispo in those good areas. No, I'm saying, I promise you that's also, I don't know if you noticed this, but yeah, I'm in Nick's um, group, right? Yeah, so I know yeah. exactly what he does, right? I mean, I mean, I was in his office, you know, just to, just a while back. And then they're doing some pretty good numbers up there, right? Are but they then still doing the whole nationwide thing? No, but he doesn't do it. I mean, he would tell you that he's doing it, but mm -hmm. then you would have to be, I mean, which is what I which is what I would say too. I'm I, I mean, I'm nationwide, but it would take you to be, it would take us to be close enough for me to share with you exactly how we're going nationwide. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. But it's no longer like, I know, cause I ran so many, I spent thousands and thousands. Nah, nah, you're going to end up wasting your money. Yeah. You're going to end up wasting your money. I mean, and by the way, Sean Terry, he kind of still runs it that way, bro. Like yeah. I, don't know, I was in Sean Terry's mastermind. I think it's great. I just didn't renew. I joined another one, but he, he runs it as the state, well, the whole state, you know, and yeah, that but, only works if you have tons and tons of marketing money. Number one, and then with Sean Terry, for instance, because he, I, I've been seeing him hanging around with Corey Gary. So there is a good chance 90% of, of his deals are innovation. So they're going on the market. There right. is a good chance. If you can train your sales team to prep every single seller that they're talking to for innovation, I think that's a business model by itself. Yeah. So right. you're going into the deal expecting to list that house on the market. It's not a good whole. If you're a wholesaler and that's your strategy, it, it's, it's not going to work because, you know, you need cash buyers in those areas that want to buy them and flip them. And there's not a flip market in a lot of these random places. That is true. That is true. I'm, for I'm, for hey, the innovation, you're right. That makes sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, for, for, for the innovation, because you can put it on the market and people, people can come in with like conventional loans and stuff like that. So it sounds like you've done a couple innovations then, huh? Oh yeah. A bunch of them. A lot That's of awesome, them. Man. I've never done one. I, I just did, never really pitched it, but it sounds like, you know, from what you're saying, you know, just have to so, tell why, you're, why it's beneficial. Okay, so I mean, so it's never ever been, hey, this this is innovation deal, right? It's mm -hmm. never ever been that. It's always been, hey, we think we can wholesale this thing, mm -hmm. and you know, it's 14, 20 days into the contract. Mm. So I was like, when are we closing? And I'm like, oh, can't disappoint this lady. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can't. We can't just leave them hanging. We can cancel the contract right now. Because for some reason, for some, I, I mean, deliberately, our contract has an inspection period until the closing day. Got it. I know, I know it's not fair, but hey, I got to protect myself some way, I'm, right? Mine's the same way. <laughs> right. So, so, I mean, but then, so it's like day 20. We don't have a deal. We've tried to sell it to everybody. Nobody wants it, mm -hmm. right? So what, we'll always end up calling the seller and say, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, here's something we can do here, right? The easier option for us today is to just tell you, hey, you know what? The property doesn't look anything like we expected. It's, you know, our local partners do not think it's a good deal for us to work, for them to work with us at that price. So, so the easiest option for us today is to just walk away from this deal. Mm. But we don't want to do that to you. Here's what we can do for you. We can take this property, put it on the market for you. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to need some repairs, right? We don't know what those repairs are going to be. We don't know what the buyer wants. We, we don't know what the buyer wants the end product to look like. So what we're going to do is put it on the market, have the buyers give us the feedback on what they want fixed up, and okay. then we can fix it up at that point or give them credit towards it. Because the way I'm going to want my kitchen is not the same way the next guy is going to want his kitchen. So what's the, point, what's the point of doing it my way 
wanting to put it on the market and then nobody wants it. Yeah. So we kind of teach them to put it on the market for them and then wait for the buyers to give us feedback to us fixing it up. So that's how we always get them to be like, okay, cool. Yeah. Throw, throw it on the market. Do you usually need to ask for a longer uh, closing period? Do you need to say, Hey, I'm going to send you addendum. So this is my take a couple, like maybe 30 more days or do, how yeah, does yeah. So, yeah. So we send them an, an, an addendum on them for the, for the, for the closing date. We just put to be determined. Oh, okay. Got it. That's we better. Just put it to, to, to be determined. But then we let them know, Hey, this it's going to be, at least another 30 to 45 days at the bare minimum. Got it. You know, if it's a seller that's not pressed, they're fine with it. And something I've also done over time has always been, hey, I can give you a cash advance of like three, four, five thousand up front. That's good. That yeah, probably always do, to do it too. Just get some money up front, you know, whatever you got to take care of this pressing to you right now. And then sometimes I'll see if there's a mortgage on, on the house, I'll take over the payment until this house sells. So just whatever makes it easier for them so that when they see you're making 20, 25, 30,000 at the end of when it's time to sell, they don't care. Do you usually prep them for that too? Or do you just, is it just, you don't really talk about it until the end when there's a fee? Oh no, we let them know that. We, we, we let them know that. I mean, so we, we tell them, hey, I guarantee to you, you're, you're going to get, so I actually closed one today, mm -hmm. right? And that one, we agreed to a 112500 Okay. We put it on the market at 170 mm -hmm. but we didn't, we didn't sell, we, we, only, we only able to sell at 135 Okay. But then the whole time the seller saw it on the market at 170. They knew it was on the market for 170 and they need to be only getting 112. But we also told them, hey, we're going to put some work into this house. We can't, we don't have a dollar figure just yet. Obviously, we're not a nonprofit. So we got to make some money. Yeah. Did you have to put work into that one? Uh, cleaning cost about $3,000 between just hauling stuff out, you know, cleaning the carpet, you know. It was okay. little bits of work, but you know, it was definitely not forty thousand dollars worth of work. So you said one thirty five is what you sold it for. Yeah, and then you have the buyer's commission. I'm assuming three percent. Yeah, so it was six percent for the agents. Really, six percent. Six percent. Oh, did you not use a, a flat fee listing service? You used no, 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 we didn't. We didn't use a flat fee listing because the house was was dirty on the inside. I needed somebody to manage, you know, Got the cleaning out and stuff like that. So what we ended up doing was we had to drop the seller from one twelve five to one hundred five. Got it. And so at the end of the day, we made twelve thousand five hundred, but we couldn't do innovation there because the seller was a power of attorney for her mom. Mm. So we were a power of attorney over a power of attorney. It doesn't work, right? Right. So what we had to do was we had to prepare an invoice. At so close, the, yeah, an invoice. I sent it over to the title company. Hey, this company is owed X amount of dollars for seventy-five hours worth of work, and so that's how they paid us was off of an, an, an invoice. I like that. And do, right. do you do you usually file when you do novations? Do you file um what's it called? A memorandum. A memorandum. Do you do that too? Um, so to be honest with you, we should, but you know, just depend on, on the sellers. Sometimes we don't. I know most companies always do it. You know, some some sellers are it's easier to work with, right? Yeah. If it's a seller that you think is gonna snake you, I'll file one. Okay. But you don't it's not like a written rule that you do every time you do one. It should be, but it's not so far. Okay. Not not yet. Well, man, hey, I've learned a ton from you because, you know, you got some good stuff going on and kind of like what I got going on Investor Thrive is, you know, I, I basically tell people, teach people how to do the painless wholesaling method. I focus on sales, but you got a great operation that you still got going. And I think that's sick. And I'm going to definitely implement a lot of what you said. That's awesome, man. I've learned. Absolutely. A ton. I mean, whatever it is, I mean, I, I don't think I know enough just yet, but I think I have some resources that, I'm, that maybe I paid for, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to shoot them your way. You know, if we can just keep it within the family, like right there. Of course. Of we, course. Don't to, we don't want it to be public information. You know what I'm yeah, saying? man. And I got resources too. you know, that if you ever need anything, hit me up. And if anyone's watching this, you know, this is this. This is what it's all about. It's all about the brotherhood. It's about helping each other grow. You know, that's why I do this podcast. That's why I do Investor Dive. You know, I obviously want to give back. We've received a lot from other mentors, other people who have made content. So, you know, we're in the trenches. We're doing it. And that's why I do this is because, you know, we're doing it right. I'm, I'm not just yeah. saying you're just acting or thinking about it, right? Like this is good info you're given now. This is awesome. You know, yes, so absolutely. I appreciate that. Absolutely. And then if, if, if anyone listening to this wants to reach out about anything, listen, I'm more than happy to, like I said, it took me four years to get a deal. If you're struggling to get a deal, if you want, if you're looking for the one person you want to talk to, it's me. Dude, I'm in yeah. without absolutely. a doubt. What's, what's the best way they can reach you, Ben? I'm going to put it down here at the bottom. Where, where okay. I so, I mean, I got Instagram. Give them yeah. your Instagram. Let's have them. Let's send them to your Instagram. What is it? Okay. Right here at the bottom. Scrolling down. You see it at the bottom? Okay. There it is. Instagram at Iguillo underscore. Yes. 
hit my guy up. He's got some great tips, tricks. He's running his own business. You know, if you if you guys have any deals in New York, he, on speed dial, he'll find out his buyers, Atlanta. Absolutely. Also, you know, obviously, uh, if you're in Atlanta, hit him up. You know, I'm sure he, he's looking for awesome sales guys sometimes, you know, always looking to hire, I'm assuming. Every day. Every day. Every yeah, so day. Come, come in there, do some calls, help him out. You know, he's going to help you out. Let's let's leave with one golden nugget. What's one thing you can tell people before we end this that, you know, you, you want to leave everybody with? Hey, um, I mean, I guess what I, I guess my my mantra in life is, you know, if it's easy, it's not worth it. Right. Yeah. If it's easy, it's not. If it's easy, it's not. It's not worth. It's 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 not worth it. And here's here's an an, an analogy I, I want to give everybody. Now, life is not all about money. Like money is not everything, but money is a driving factor. It's a driving factor. Now, if you wake up every day and you try to figure out how to make a thousand dollars a day, right? It may take you ten years, but one day you figure it out, right? Yeah. If you wake up every day and you try to figure out how to make ten thousand dollars a day, it may take you ten years, but one day you figure it out. What I'm trying to say is, pick your heart, because it's gonna be hard regardless. Whether you're going for a hundred dollars a day or ten thousand dollars a day, I mean, you might as well go high, right? <laughs> might as well just go for it. And then that's just no, it just it's just no with money. Is also with like personal development and you know personal growth. And if you're trying to work on your brand or trying to get into in, get in shape, you know. It's not going to be easy, you know what I'm saying? So let's just, you know, we're just going to try to get better every single day. Yeah, man, that's what I really respect about having this conversation with you. I didn't really know all the stuff you went through, but you you went for four years doing this, you know, and, and it wasn't easy, right? And I, I don't think I ever tell anyone to come in here and that it's easy, right? It, it requires effort, requires, requires practice and action. But uh, once you do figure it out, like you have a skill set that a lot of people don't know. You don't, a lot of people don't know how to talk to a seller, get it under contract, sign it, flip it. Innovation, it that that's a that's an awesome skill set to have. It's amazing. It's I'm grateful paper, for you. Paper, brother. <laughs> it's just <paper. laughs> it's crazy. I appreciate the opportunity though, Nathan. Thank you very much. I've watched you grow from um, I mean, I think sometime about, about this time last year was when you started your YouTube channel, right? Bro, that's when I started last year. And same when I started too, I was like, dude, I don't know what this is gonna amount to, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna stay consistent with it, right? And it's grown over time. Let me tell you this really cool thing. So someone just reached out to me um to run an ad on my YouTube channel. Someone's like, Hey, can you run an ad? And I just did a video and I shouted them out. So they were like, I'll pay you five hundred bucks. And I was like, So I've been reading the book, um, Never Split the Difference. You read it, right? I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure most people have. So, <laughs> so they said, Hey, can you do 500? And in the book, he talks about how to negotiate with people the right way. You uh -huh. basically kind of let them down or say no in a nicer way. So when they said 500, I said, I th I'm like, I can do more than that. I was like, that's a really, and this is what the book says. I said, this is, that's a really generous offer, but I'm sorry, that won't work for me. And that's all I said. That, Cause that's what the book says. So just let them down, say that it's generous, but no. So right. then, they're like, then the lady said, what can you do it for? And I was like, what's, I didn't give my price. You don't ever want to give your price first. So I said, I don't know. What's the best you can do? So then she said, 750. And I said, mm, no, actually, I think I need it would for me to do it. I'd have to be a little bit more. Can you? And then I said, I'd name my price. I said, can you do a thousand? And she said, okay, let's do it. So I use the same skill sets that we use in this business to negotiate with sellers, to negotiate an ad. Dude, it took me t like 20 minutes, 10 minutes to make that video. I made right. it. I put it out and they sent me a thousand dollar check. Like, I mean, look, if this never goes anywhere, I made a thousand bucks off of an ad. Like, that's, <laughs> Hell yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the, I mean, that's the whole essence of that. I mean, it doesn't get any more passive than that, to be honest, bro. I mean, it's awesome. Now that YouTube channels monetize, I'm making some money off. Of it. It's not crazy, but it's, this is where it starts, right? You just right, go I mean, for it and you just do it consistently. Just think about where you will be in another, you know, 365 days, 12 months from now. You, you've seen how much growth you've had over the past 12 months. Let's think about how, how much further you could be another 12 months from now. Bro, you know, in three yeah. years, me and you probably won't even be wholesome, bro. We're going to be, we're going to be doing big buildings in New York and building Amen. out, developing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. <laughs> I won't be like, hey, you know about wholesaling? Like, yeah, I used to do that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, it's I mean? definitely a very good hustle. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. a very good hustle. But I mean, unless you're Sean Terry, I don't know how he wakes up every morning and still does it after all these many years. Bro, I think I, my man just loves it, you know, and I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a good strategy. But I think most people get into wholesaling because they want to get into apartments, passive income. They want to build the dream life. If you wake up every morning and you're just running a wholesaling company, like nobody really really gets into this to run a wholesaling business they get into it for the passive income right uh -huh. and, get, and to get out of it yeah if you, 
if if you can build out a pretty solid organization, then you can actually remove yourself from it and just right. go do something else. Exactly. And I think a lot of people get into wholesaling too is because the the business is set up to find deals, right? So if you can own a wholesaling business and you can cherry pick the good ones and keep them, that's why I originally got into wholesaling because I was like, hey, I'd I'd like to have the pick of the litter, right? Pick the right. Good flip the good stuff. So that that's why we do what we do, man. But uh it takes takes time, effort and you just go for it. Absolutely, man. All Absolutely. right. We'll, we'll have to bring you back, man. We'll have to bring you back in a year or 6 months and just be like, "All right, where you at now? We got to just Let's check on each other." Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do All it for right. sure. Okay, well, hey, we're good. We're going to end right here, but yeah, man, send me that list, text it to me, email it to me, whatever and let's keep in touch. Let's help each other out and everybody again, hit up um Francis on Instagram and, you know, let's grow together, all right? Absolutely. Appreciate you for having me, Nathan. Good luck. All, right. All right. Later, brother. All right, Nathan. You have a good weekend. Yeah, you too, man. Bye. All right, bye-bye.